Hi, and welcome back to the North Lodge Cottage Garden. I'm hoping that by the smile on your face, you can already tell that the rose review that's coming up for you next really does put a smile on my face and I cannot wait to share this one with you. I'm also hoping that because of the year of introduction with this particular rose, it's not gonna fall into obscurity and I'm hoping that my thoughts and my review of this rose are gonna make some of you think about it a little bit. It was launched in 2018, literally a little time just before the global pandemic. And as a result, I haven't really heard a huge amount of hubbub or noise about it anywhere. But this rose is utterly beautiful. This is Mill on the Floss. It is absolutely stunning. And I'm really, really hoping that I can sway many of you into going out and looking for this rose, either buying it directly from David Austin itself, or if you see this in a nursery and you may not have heard about it, and you may not have heard too much noise about it, that you're gonna go and you're gonna go and find this rose because it is beautiful. One or two large points to note. David Austin is saying this reaches around four and a half feet. It is also uh, marked on the website as being suitable for a pot, which I am saying big, big gardener Ben knows to. The shrub that this came from, I'm gonna turn it around so you can see a little bit more color. There we go, let's roll, roll it back around because that bloom is so enchantingly beautiful. The shrub that this particular rose came from was standing about my height. Now I know I'm not particularly tall, I'm, I'm as square as I am tall, but it was still very nearly five and a half coming on to six feet tall and it's really only the middle parts of June. I have a, a strong feeling that mill on the floss is going to really reach more like around six feet once it's fully established and growing and that is a really really good thing for me. All of you that know me well and have you seen huge sweeping shots of the garden and my cottage garden style here at North Lodge know that I absolutely love the floppy, the informal, the ones that ramble about like the poet's wife and stick out a head here and stick out a head there. This rose is very much like that and a very much the same size as the poet's wife in its form. So think of a very large informal bush, something like Claire Austin or the poet's wife, something that's going to sprawl about your border and pop up here and pop up there. It's going to need a little bit of support. So do be uh, prepared to get in there with some uh, bean poles or some bamboo sticks, but however you do these things, but it is going to need a little bit of support because it is a large bush and it is going to throw up really long arching leaders with massive sprays of blooms dotted all over it. The foliage is very, very dark green and glossy as you'd expect it to be. The blooms, if any of you grow Benjamin Britten, this rose reminds me so much of that rose and I think that's why I've fallen so head over in heels in love with Mill on the Floss. This beautiful antique aging to the flower, which is one of the reasons why I love Benjamin Britten. Obviously it's a very dark coral pink red, sometimes described as a, a, a coral colour, but Mill on the Floss is this beautiful candy floss pink colour with these lovely dark edges around the outside. The flowers are born in huge sprays and clusters. I'll pick one of these up for you now so you can see it. This one bearing oh, only four or five, but you can see really very, very lovely deep uh, cerise pink buds, uh, very much the same shape as the buds on something like Scarborough Fair, very pointed and dome, sh dome shaped at the bottom, very pointed at the top. And as soon as you are, have broken bud, you've got that lovely variation in colour already running through that. The beautiful candy floss pink with that lovely dark pink running up the outer edges of the petals. It really is utterly stunning very good for cutting. I know so many of you are really interested in this. I mean, these are lovely, long, straight uh, canes, uh, very, very robust. You can see if I wobble it about now, it's nice and tough uh, and utterly thornless. Now, the plant is not completely thornless, but it has very, very few thorns indeed. So it is nice to handle. I haven't had to debarb this one at all to be able to handle it for you today. So a really nice one to be cutting and bringing into the house. A repeat flowering rose that's going to start flowering for you in somewhere like late to mid June. It's then going to flower all the way through the season. Now mine at home is fairly young. It's only been in the ground for a little while, but this one is actually from my client's garden at um, 
my English walled garden, not far from here, here. And her shrub, as I say, is nearly six foot tall and was in, in flower last year at the back end of November. But that flower up close for you, and this is one of the reasons why I'm so enchanted with this particular rose. Again, if you're thinking of Benjamin Britten, you're thinking about the coloration with that uh, darker stain around the outside. If any of you grow the Wedgwood rose, that's the kind of look you're getting right into the center packed with literally hundreds and hundreds of petals. It is absolutely beautiful. And the fragrance, oh, honestly, it's absolutely to die for. So I know everybody smells things very, very differently and scent is always circumspect. But if any of you buy this rose and it doesn't smell of what I'm just about to tell you of, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to drop me a message and tell me what you do think it smells of. It's strong. It's rich, it's fruity, it smells like tinned uh, tangerines or tinned clementine, uh, that lovely smell you get when you open a can, and it's very, not very much in fashion these days, but tan, uh, canned mixed fruit that you would put in a trifle. Sugary, sweet, really intensely fruity. It's absolutely stunning producing a large mounding bush that I would suggest you plant at the back end or the back of a border, or maybe plant several together in the middle of your lawn to create a real large impact. But Mill on the Floss is absolutely stunning. I'm really impressed with this rose. And again, I hate to drop too many hints for the top 20 that's coming towards the end of National Rose Month, but this one is gonna be well up there. Along with Silas Mana, this one has really, really impressed me this year. And it's just stunning. You can see, look at that bloom. It's just so, so pretty. So this is Mill on the Floss by David Austin Roses. I think larger than their stating, heading for more like five and a half to six feet, a repeat flowering bush rose with an enchanting coloration, beautiful heads which nod on great big long arching stems and a fragrance. A fragrance of tutti frutti, tin fruit, clementines and peaches, utterly stunning.